what lingers in the gothic remains of an Ohio prison. Does the spirit of a 14-year-old boy exist alongside his killer? Would you be able to last the night in one of the most haunted reformatories on Earth? Today we test the believability of the Mansfield Reformatory. Welcome to Believing the Bizarre, where we dive into the unknown and the unusual, and tell you whether or not we find it believable. With a boom, Tyler! With a boom. Here we are, happy Halloween month, Eve? All around. All around. It is from the moment, the moment you see the first leaf fall from that tree, until you're out begging for candy. It's Halloween season. Do you do that anymore? I don't do that anymore. I usually give the candy away now. I just wait for kids to, to walk around dark corners, and then I beat them up and take the candy from them. <laughs> do, you, do you not do that? It's f***ed up, man. Listen, I, they, we get like three trick-or-treaters around here, so you can't really beat them up because then there's only three of them, and they'll, they'll remember you. I get so many by my house. Mine's very old. Oh, when yeah. I lived there, dude, it was nonstop. It was actually really cool. It had a good vibe to it. I think this year on my porch, I'm going to dress up as a scarecrow. Yeah. With a bunch of, like, hay and just, like, pop out. Yes. You should have your dogs out there dressed as something, too. My dogs will kill the children. <laughs> and then you can take the candy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Perfect plan. For real. Can you also, like, let them take candy and, like, a Believing the Bizarre sticker? Absolutely. That's actually not a bad idea. I should do that. Yeah. That's All a right. good idea. All right. Let's... let's... Or to the parents, at least. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see. Do you have a... Do you, do you have an iPhone, little child? <laughs> <laughs> that no that okay forget candy we'll give them an iphone and then a, a believe in the bizarre sticker are you putting the money up for this? listen we'll say the only way you could take this iphone <laughs> is if you promise to listen and subscribe okay i guess <laughs> if i have to before we get started proper i do want to say one of my students found the podcast and is now listening regularly do you want to do a shout out no but <laughs> they're gonna hear that if you know who I'm, if you're listening i told you to stop <laughs> And you now have a Believing the Bizarre tattoo. We can't really talk about it, but just, it's a fact. Dude, I'm so excited for that. Yeah, we can't talk. It's like, okay, we're recording this before it happens. But at this point in time, you have it. Yeah. We just can't yeah. talk about I'm it. I'm going to be editing this episode with my arm throbbing. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. I'm so pumped. But we're talking about locking things up. We're talking about ghosts. We're talking about fake haunted house tours. Yeah, I didn't tell you about this. I was kind of hoping that you would tell your own little tidbit at uh, one point like when i slid yeah and yeah I we'll slid. talk about okay because there's a story that kind of matches in this which is creepy about someone falling yeah i didn't get pushed well okay okay <laughs> those shoes were literally like they it's like they strapped icicles to the bottom of those shoes and said good luck hope <laughs> you never have to run from a fake chainsaw <laughs> so the mansfield reformatory it's a historical building now. Y'all might know it from the Shawshank. Shawshank Redemption. That's where they filmed that. It's this giant prison in Mansfield, Ohio, which is honestly, it's it's really close. It's about an hour and 20 minutes away from this spot right now. Really? From right here? Yep. I looked it up. Nice. It's about 70 miles away if you're not just going off time like we do in Ohio. That's true. But we are talking about a place in Ohio, so you kind of have to adhere to our rules. Hour and 20 minutes from North Canton. Yep. From the address of... <laughs> <laughs> Our $10 patrons know it. Well, yeah, there's quite a, quite a few people that actually know it. The facility itself was designed... I'm drinking this god-awful liquid monster juice, which is just thick and red, not like a Mio. Rhett and Link are now being sponsored by Liquid Death. So I'm like comparing oh, really? I'm comparing their ad to the one, the one we did last year. Yeah. It ours was more skit like, but they I mean they know how to they know how to sponsor. They also have more budget. Yeah, but they're just they're just good. Yeah, they yeah, know they know great. what they're doing. Yeah, I I've stumbled upon them on YouTube before. This facility was designed by a Cleveland architect named Levi Schofield, and there were three distinct design styles when he designed it. There was Victorian Gothic, Richardson Romanesque, and Queen Anne. 
and it's supposed to be inspiring to all those that were sentenced to the walls of this place. Because it's huge. You've seen it. Yeah. It's this giant, almost like a castle. It's crazy. And it's like, what's this castle doing in Ohio? And then you go to Loveland. There's another castle in Ohio. And then you go to... Cleveland. <laughs> Cleveland. There's another castle. In Ohio. There's like four or five random castles in Ohio. But this one's more like a full dungeon. <laughs> yeah, we're going to talk about the sub-basement. He's like, I want to make it beautiful for the people that are never going to see the light of day again. <laughs> oh, that's sad. In September of 1896, the first 150 inmates were delivered by train from Columbus, Ohio, the state capital. Do you think they felt honored? I don't Yay. know. I wonder if they're like, oh, this is at least it's new. Yeah. That's how I felt when I went to high school. I was like, at least it's new, right? Dude, my high school is ancient. My high school is only like two years old when I got to it because they just redone it. Mm. They were given no time to rest, however, because as soon as they got there, they got right to work. They were constructing the facility sewer system and also the stone wall that surrounded the whole building. Oh. So they, they had to get right to manual labor. Were they getting paid for that? That's actually a really good question. I don't, they probably were getting a little bit, not a lot though. I know how that sounds. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, Ben? <laughs> Making those prison wages. Yeah. Listen, as a teacher. <laughs> yeah, I also got here it's, super it's just big, late. It's, it's just big shop class. Just, <laughs> just keep going. I found it interesting they had to do the sewer system, though. Oh, really? Yeah, they built the sewer system of the place. Mm. Like, what do they do? Uh, never mind. Just big outhouse. <laughs> Honey bucket. What? That that's what they called the outhouses when I went to the gorge, the amphitheater in oh, Washington. Really? They called them honey buckets. I didn't know that. There's a 25 foot wall, by the way. What was that? The prisoners built. They had 25 foot wall okay. of stone. Okay. I was gonna put fence, but I was like, that seems too small to be a fe- too big to be a fence. The reformatory closed in December of 1990. To put that in perspective, that is merely a month after I was born. It was about 30 years ago, <laughs> roughly, give or take. Was it to film the? F- to film the film, Shawshank, it, Stephen King was like, shut it down. It didn't close to film it. It closed before. Mm. Like, it closed actually because lawsuits brought by prisoners for overcrowding and inhumane actions. Too much spookiness. Too much beatings to death. Oh. Yeah. By ghosts. They were there. There was also a lot of suicides here, which I didn't realize. There, oh, there I was did, a lot. I actually never heard that. Mm. So... The reformatory has been renovated since the original closing, and it has been the set for many artist music videos, documentaries, and the main backdrop for the Shawshank Redemption, like we said. But you know what? If you go on the website, they make damn sure you know <laughs> it was the backdrop for Shawshank. Walking Dead should have filmed there in oh, season they three. Oh, should have. I mean, a great it backdrop. It looks nothing like Georgia, but they still should have done it. They could have just gone to Ohio or something. Maybe that season would have done a little better. I like that season, though. Mm. Do you, you think that prison was haunted where they filmed that? Or did they make it? They probably made was it. Was that a soundstage? It was uh, a soundstage. I don't, nah, no, I think they usually went on location. But you know what? I don't know, so I can't really speak to that. My dad met extras. In, when he worked in Georgia, he met act- extras from The Walking Dead. Really? Yeah, well, he'd uh, go out and drink and stuff. Yeah, that's pretty cool. According to the reformatory themselves, these are the most haunted locations in Mansfield. So this is according to them. Number eight. There's eight of them. Eight. Wait, in the reformatory or in the city? In the re- reformatory. Jeez. Okay. I mean, even eight in the city would be a lot, but yeah. eight in the reformatory? Eight spots in the reformatory. Okay. Eight, the east wing on the first floor, and they said there's usually shadow people there. Number seven, the third floor, middle admin, I think middle administration floor. They hear constant voices, footsteps, and shadow people. Six is the sub-basement. And that's like, so there's basement and then underneath the basement. And they said that place has always been creepy. They didn't even like to use it when it was active. Number five is actually the chapel. They said there's a lot of ghosts that like touch people there. Number four is the West Attic. Apparently a well-known person had an experience there. They didn't say who it was, but they had a a bad experience. I think it might have been Nick Goff from um, Ghost Adventures. Oh, because I read an article about how he went there and had a really bad experience. Oh. Said your ratings suck. <laughs> Number three is the admin basement. 
there are two entities down there, and one is good, and apparently one is not. Two is the cell blocks, east and west. Like I said, a lot of bad things happen here. Murders, rapes, suicides, all happen in these cell blocks. And number one is solitary confinement. Oh. Where, you know, they yeah. crammed a lot of people into small spaces. But separate space. <laughs> Separately solitary. Well, yeah. 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 All right, Tyler. So that was the history of the building and where they said it's the most haunted. Let's talk about the specific spirits mm. of the Mansell Reformatory. The special infected, the special characters, the, the, the boss battles. You go through, you fight the shadow figures, and then when you get into a corner, you got to fight these guys. I'm going to be real. There's a lot. Well, a lot happened here. So there's a, re- a lot of reasons why. Well, and if you believe in the idea of energy, I mean, no one's like, yay, jail. I mean, there are people that are like, you know, you get yeah. housing, you get... But I think this is a different this is time. Different. It's yeah. also a really abusive time. Yeah. It's a, it's, a, it's a bad one. So to start it off, I mentioned earlier there were two spirits in, I think, the admin basement. Uh, yeah. And one is believed to be a 14-year-old boy. And that's the more positive energy one of the two of them. And it's thought that he was killed in that basement. They think he was beaten to death. Was he an inmate at 14 years old? Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. He showed up late to high school one day and they were like, <laughs> <laughs> off to the prison. What? What? He shot one spitball. <laughs> Wait, do you have a hall pass? <laughs> <laughs> Time to go to Mansfield Reformatory. To the, is it ad, do you, what is it, ad, admin? Admin. Admin basement? Yeah. But he resides there with possibly the person that killed him. Mm. The guard that might have beaten him to death. And that is the much more negative entity that is there. Because he's the more positive and the guard is much more menacing. It's It makes people nauseous. It, it's like darker. And it's like, ah. You know. You know what I'm trying to say. Bad. Yeah, bad. You might be able to catch the spirit of the 14-year-old flickering from wall to wall or out of the corner of your eye. The other entity is more like a shadow figure that kind of stands there and lurks. But they're both said to be in this this basement. And I, I'm not sure what to make of that. What do you think? Like, why? I think that maybe the prison guard is, like, holding this boy back. I don't know why he had such animosity toward him. Yeah. But it's 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 almost like a yin and yang situation, you know? That would be really sad if that was the case, though. Yeah. I mean, we don't know what the boy did to be there. Obviously, nothing right. would merit this, and we don't know. Like, it's seen, I wonder if it's... If there's ever were records of this, or if this is just a background story that people have made for these two entities. Mm-hmm. I don't... I'm not sure. Yeah. I didn't get into the Mansfield Reformatory records. There's probably a lot. But, it, I mean, if that is true, then that's tragic. But mm-hmm. either way, it's spooky. And the next spot is the hole. The hole is a dark, deep place. It's this place where they would... They'd put people down here, and they would rarely feed them, like... Once every three days with bread and water. Yeah, this does that doesn't even seem like a prison. That's like torture. That's it is, crazy. Yeah. That's like medieval. Yeah, that's like the Rancor pit in Star Wars. Without the Rancor, just like boom, fall down. Like sorry. Yeah, exactly. And these types of punishments are like the kind of punishments where people go insane. Yeah, like I like I wonder what they did or what the guards thought they did bad enough at the reformatory to get that to deserve that. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Maybe, I don't know. I, well, it is a prison. Prisons can get pretty bad. But. Yeah, and I mean, the people in there could have been really, really bad people, but we don't know that, and it's just, I don't know. It's it just, is also overcrowded, too. Yeah, so you just slip and fall down there, and they don't, <laughs> they don't find you for three days. Well, also, the, the, the staff of the reformatory were known to send upwards of 100 people in a space designed to fit approximately 20. So that's how bad the overcrowding is in the, in the hole. It's like when you're waiting for a concert to start, right? And yes. you're just all on yeah. the floor. Except you, you're stuck there for days. Yeah, and you can't move and, and no music comes. No. You're just wait. It's always like five minutes before the shut. The and set it's starts. dark. There's no lights. This is underground. It's just like silence and then you just have that one like. <laughs> 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 Who is that? Gee, like, do you think they talk to each other or do you think. I would imagine, but I feel like it might get, like, really stale eventually. 
<laughs> someone in the way back is like, yo, I had Taco Bell before I found on here. Just keeping it 100 on that. I'm really hungry. Uh, shut up, Greg. We're all f***ing hungry. Yeah. Wait, where's Jerry? Are you eating, Jerry? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like it could easily slip into cannibalism, but that's a whole nother bag of worms. So people that go into the hole usually feel this nauseous, like people like ghost hunters now, usually feel this nausea, they feel cold spots, and they feel uncomfortable, as though they're being watched. I think just from the negativity alone, that could be, I feel like knowing that something like that happened there, and then you going there and and kind of experiencing it firsthand, like, you're not experiencing that, but you are at you're physically at where it took place. Yeah. I think like that can wash over people. You know what I mean? Like sometimes when you go like, like for instance, you know, New York city going to ground zero. Yeah. Nobody's really saying that's haunted, but you can still feel it. You can feel the sadness. Yeah. I wonder even, yeah. I'm not trying to already say that. I don't think this is haunted. I'm just saying, I wonder if there's a chance that by dropping down in there, you're putting yourself mentally in their situation and you could be, feeling that rather than necessarily whether or not it's haunted not saying it's not haunted i'm just saying i think that feeling that empathy that you're getting from being in that exact situation could be playing a role in that as well well it's interesting i wonder how much of that ties into maybe the stone recording theory what do you mean what is that that's like you know places kind of etch in like emotions oh yeah 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 it's almost exactly what you're saying because I think, it, but I think it would be different where it's like, if you drop down there and you had no idea what it was for, like, what if you lied, right? And like, this is actually a really interesting uh, experiment. Let's say you have two groups of, of tourists walking around. You drop one group down there and say, this is where they kept food supplies. How do you guys feel down there? And they're like, eh. and then you put the next group down there and you tell them what it actually was. I wonder if based on what you tell them it's about, it could influence how they feel. Now, if you get the first group that still feels terrified and they feel cold spots and they're freaked out, then obviously that would lean towards haunted. Yeah. I I, I would love to see the experiment. I feel like no matter what, they would feel Yeah. And it's, it's already universally known now that it's a haunted place. Yeah. It's too late. The, the, uh, you, we can't control the variables. <laughs> okay. Okay, Professor Hammond. Is this one of them placebos? <laughs> it's just a placebo hole. Ew. Ew. <laughs> Ew. The next spirit or entity we're going to talk about is this entity that lives in a specific room. There is a chair in the Mansfield Reformatory. And this chair is in a room. It has no windows. And it sits in the middle of the room and looks out into the hallway. If someone moves this chair, shortly after it's moved, it will be heard moving back to the middle of the room. If someone sits in this chair, it angers the spirit. Apparently, the spirit is very evil. Or evil? It's not misunderstood. It's evil. Angry. Yeah. And if you sit in this chair, you will be. it said you will get scratched. I saw a couple of pictures, actually. They're creepy. So I have a quote about the chair from Dark Art and Craft. And it goes like this. Quote, I found one account where a person sat in the chair provoking the spirit. By provoking it, I mean yelling at it, inciting it to take action. The person left with scratch marks all down their back. This is one of the only physical manifestations from the hauntings that I could find. End quote. So it's it's supposed to actually physically attack anyone who sits in this chair, especially if you provoke it. Mm. I don't... Would you sit in that chair? No, there's no win. There's no win. Now, like, live stream, podcast. <laughs> do it, Tyler, do it. Maybe, but I would say, like, on my own, for my own self-interest, there's just no win, right? Like, my, like I already believe in most, like, haunting things, so it's like my curiosity wouldn't cause me to do that. Okay, what about this? Would you move the chair and walk away? Yeah, I, yeah, I think that's something. I would be more apt to try that. It just goes hurling towards my back. Oh, God. It's like WWE with the steel chair. <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, even though the music hasn't worked in years, you hear the boom, 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 boom. Yeah. God, it's the Mansfield Reformatory Ghost. <laughs> I really like the idea that the announcer is st- stuttering on it as well. <laughs> the next place, the next entity is the cell blocks. They're very, very haunted. Possibly one of the most haunted places, despite what Mansfield actually says, they're very haunted. A lot of bad stuff happened here. 
There are several instances of suicides in these overcrowded cells from men that were hard, but apparently not that hard. Quote from Dark and Arts and Craft about the suicides, quote, James Lockhart. It's believed that Lockhart, who had a less violent offense than his cellmates and neighbors, he was experiencing bullying from them and threats. To escape his fate at their hands, he stole a turpentine can and set himself on fire. The fire was so significant that all anyone could do was watch him slowly melt, screaming and writhing in pain as he died. End quote. Wow. Wow. And then another inmate who did kill himself is, quote, Larry Hammer, a prisoner who was a week due from his transferring, made a noose out of his bedsheet and tossed himself over the railing, hanging himself, end quote. But he was just about to leave? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ghost, man. Who knows? Who knows what demons he had? So next, I've got a couple more spirits, but these come from a different source than the one I've been quoting. These come from, I think, I think one of our favorites, Rinker. Oh, yeah. Was this scary? <laughs> so this is about a woman who was killed accidentally in the facility. And so this is the quote from Rinker. Quote, as the story goes, Helen Galtiki, wife of Warden Galtiki, haunts the administration wing of the building. She was killed in 1950 when a gun fell onto the floor and left her with a fatal bullet wound. Now rose-scented perfume wafts from the bathroom she once occupied. Cold spots are felt in the sealed hallways and visitors' cameras cease to work until they leave the wing. Sometimes, the voice of Helen and her husband can be reportedly heard in the area. End quote. So someone dropped a gun and it shot her? Uh, yeah. Jeez. Or she did? Didn't what? say who dropped it. It sounds like someone just dropped it and just fired and just... <laughs> Whoops-a-daisy. <laughs> oh, shit, my liver. <laughs> yeah, no, that's what happened. Jeez. Hopefully she... You know, they cut that. So she had good perfume, but that's morbid. It's rose. It's rose scented. Mm. So no. <laughs> now the reformatory also had a cemetery attached to it. <laughs> so many people are dying. We might as well make a cemetery. It's got over two hundred people. Jeez. I guess okay. Even if there wasn't like murder and like violence, like if people just naturally died there and they didn't have family, then I guess that would make sense to a certain degree. Yeah. But I feel like it became like a side hustle for him with how many people were getting killed here. Yeah, well, it's for the unclaimed inmates. Would you would you ghost hunt in the cemetery? Oh, that'd be very scary. It'd be very scary. It, it does house the people that did die in natural causes, but also house the suicides and the murders as well. So you didn't answer, would you? I don't know, man. I don't know if I'd ghost hunt this whole place. Yeah, no, I understand. Oh, that. can I do a little aside really quick? Yeah. So I was talking to my aunt the other night. And she told me a little while ago that she had an opportunity to go ghost hunting in Waverly. Because uh, oh. she lives pretty close to there. Yeah. And she told me she was going to go. And then last the other night, she was like, I didn't end up going. I was like, oh, what happened? She's like, I had a dream <laughs> that I was, it was, it was like a bad omen. Oh. And then like a couple nights before she was supposed to go, her Facebook got hacked. They destroyed all her stuff. And they posted like a bunch of pictures with like sigils. She didn't know what the f*** they were. And then she's like, yeah, I'm not going to go to Waverly. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Isn't that wild? That Yeah, that is crazy. Would you ghost hunt here? I don't know. I would, I would be more likely to ghost hunt in the cemetery than I would to sit in that chair. In in the in the, the, the demon chair? Yep. Ain't trying to get no scratches. Apparently, if you do ghost, go ghost hunting in the cemetery, it is very hard because cameras are said to not work in the area of the cemetery. What about uh, audio files on your cell phone? I, I think, like, all electronics kind of, like, stop working there. That would be enough for me. If we tried to do it and it couldn't because everything was malfunctioning, That that's enough of a thumbs up. It's haunted for me. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely haunted. Also, small objects tend to move in the cemetery as well. What small objects are in the cemetery? Um, Like, little, like, markers and, like, flowers and stuff. Mm. Yeah. So those are the specific spots and entities that, like, haunt the the facility, the reformatory. So my experience at the facility, I've had two. Okay. The first time was a fake ghost tour. Were you, were you with me? Mm-mm. 
You didn't go. I've never been here. You didn't go to this. Nope. Alex went to this. Alex went to this. But you didn't go to this. I was assumably, assumably? I was assumably at home. Okay. It was really creepy, and they were very upfront and kind of like like leaning into it, like, the actors cannot touch you, so if you get poked, if you get touched, if you get shoved, it is not by our actors. Mwahaha. Like, you know, it's by, okay. real, it's by real ghosts. Because, um, they're like, they're not allowed to touch you. But, like, and so the, the creepiest part for me, there's a lot of creepy parts. They get right up in your grill. It was spooky, you know, like a fake haunted house. There was a part, I had, like I said, I had shoes with, like, no grip on them. Like, they were just, like... Bowling shoes. Yeah, they're basically bowling shoes. And, like, the last stretch of the haunted house was two people with chainsaws, like, coming at you down the hall. And as soon as I heard, like, it start revving up, I, like, my reaction was to, like, turn and start running. But, like, my leg slipped because of my shoe and, like, my knee hit the ground. But it's because of my shoes. But, like, I was, like, limping out. I'm like, ah, I'm really scared. That was really good. That was really cool. Ow, this hurts. (laughs) And my second encounter with it, I didn't go inside. But it was with the the Ink Carcerated tour, where it was a bunch of bands outside and they were giving tattoos and stuff. Yeah. When in 2018 they had Rise Against and a Day to Remember, great show. It's really cool. It sounds yeah. awesome. It was real because I saw a Day to Remember Rise Against back in 2012 when you were there. Yeah. Or 2011 maybe 2011 or 2012 at Kent, Ohio. Yeah. But I didn't really know a Day to Remember back then, so this time I got to fully enjoy both of the bands and it was it was a really good show. Okay, so with all the background information, I I have nothing but straight encounters now. Yes, I have, bro. I have so many encounters. There's a lot of really good encounters too. Not your nickel do- dollar store. Not your wampus cat encounters. <laughs> They're saying to mama's wampus cats. So from graveaddiction.com, 2006, a person named Carrie said, "Quote." I just got back from visiting Mansfield, and I had an experience in the cell marked with an X. Taken back to the cell after the tour, nine of us and a guide heard something in the hallway. The guide went silent. There was a sound like running, and she yelled out, Running is not allowed, thinking that the person running was a guest. Then she saw no one was missing. A distant cell door slammed. As we left, I noticed our guide looking scared and soaking with sweat. End quote. It's creepy. Now, you you could say that they planned it, right? And the guide reacts to it, but it's hard to sweat on command, assuming it's not hot. Like those are, it's like when someone gets nervous, like there's tells, physical yeah. responses. So you would say, I want to say I had a spray bottle <laughs> that they, when everyone was looking the other way, just with like the fan, like Disney. But based on the physical responses that they notice of the guide, it seems like. They weren't faking it. Could you imagine though, like hearing that? Ah, uh, it would be a creepy sensation to watch your guide, who you, like you know is following. You know, you're yeah. following them around. They're 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 like they're leading you. Like that is your guide. This is your leader, and you see them like laying down the law, no running, and then you realize no one's missing, no one else is in there, and then you just see that like small flip in them to like, I'm oh, I'm in charge of this. I'm making sure everyone's safe too. This is not out of my control. Yeah. I have no control over this aspect of the tour and the reformatory. Oh, gosh. This is the distant fear is scary. All right. Next one. Reported from Grave Addiction. Gina says, quote, Our group was walking down metal stairs from the tower. My friend and I in the back with some high school students in the front. I'm clumsy and held onto my friend's hand on the railing. Someone slapped my back. I fell forward onto my friend and over the side of the railing. My arm clenched as my muscles pulled to a painful angle. Then down to a knee, I quickly spun to face my attacker. No one was there. End quote. Did they break their arm? I, yeah, did like, did some kind of superhero maneuver? I think like they fell into the railing. Oh, okay. Not like over, but even still. That's like one of the things I remember they tell you. It's like if you get pushed, shoved, poked. Pulled your yeah. hair pulled. It's not. It's not us. It's not that the... reminds me of the ghost thing, though. Of of of. Sorry, that reminds me of your little, of your knee thing. I know you said you weren't pushed. Oh, you slipped. But... Yeah, I to- I totally slipped. I trust me. I'd milk the shit out of it if I thought I was pushed. <laughs> <laughs> I totally slipped. Unless it was a ghost puddle. Oh, oh, like a poultry guy's? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then I sl- it, it wasn't, wasn't like a great 
also like was it like a graded thing no, or was it like it, solid? I don't think so. It was just like pavement. Okay. Like a hard surface, but my shoes just were like So this is a blast from the past. This is reported to Ohio State's Reformatory's Facebook page. Wow. Randy said, quote, On my last visit to Manfield, my camera recorder picked up some tapping on the walls of a jail cell. My friend and I thought it was Morse code. My buddy was military and familiar with the code. He listened closely. It wasn't Morse. We thought it was a code developed by the prisoners to communicate without the guards knowing. The tapping noises were caught on the recorder just in that cell. No other time during the visit. End quote. Well, I was I was hoping it'd be Morse code so that, you know, it was like something creepy. Yeah, you could tell. But, but it's just like... I like the idea of it. It's also crazy that like these prisoners had time to develop their own code, but like I can't learn French, you know? They like, had nothing but time. I guess that's true. There's no podcasts, no mm-hmm. video games, no work. Well, there's a lot of work. But, yeah. You know. But they had nothing but just like, if I tap, that means poop. <laughs> If I tap, 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 it means subscribe to Believe in the God. <laughs> I'm podcast near you. Wow. Thank you, Ghost. Everyone yeah. should do that. <laughs> Much appreciated. Great plug. So this is another one from Ghost Addiction 2007. Michelle reported, quote, I work in Mansfield last year and was assigned to the hole. Me and another girl were in this empty space on opposite ends. We heard shuffling around the hallway, thinking it was a visitor who didn't know we were there. I looked over to the other girl and smiled, as if to say, let's scare them. She smiled back. We jumped out and screamed. The hallway was empty. The shuffling was gone. End quote. Mm. The hole is that place where yeah, they yeah. shoved lots of people. Could you imagine working there, even with somebody? No. And that would trip, like, that. that would just, like, it doesn't need to be this grandiose horror event. Like, that would freak me out. I would be legitimately freaked out from that yeah well okay so to me there's a difference between working in a haunted house and working in the mansell reformatory haunted house yeah but like people do that every year i know it's just like i bet that i would love to interview some of those people that work there yeah that'd be a fun patreon interview it would be yeah because i can only imagine because like it's like inception of haunting like, you are there to scare people, but you are getting scared by ghosts while you're there to scare other people. Yeah. Oh, it's like that listener, uh, Katie from England. She worked at a professional haunted house from the London Dungeon. Imagine. Yes, exactly. It's just like that. Actually, this, this episode is making me think of that a little bit. But imagine you're, like, setting up to scare someone, and then you see them get scared by something else. And yeah. you realize that there's no other coworker right there. And you're like, what is scaring What you? actually scared them? Or like if they get put, like if you see them physically get pushed, pushed, like if you're hiding, you see someone get pushed and they look around like, what the heck? And you witnessed it. <laughs> yeah. I would break character. I'd be like, holy shit. We gotta go. Yeah. Like, listen, there's an exit this way. I'll pull my phone out. Let's do an EVP right now. Yeah. No, but seriously, that spot in the hotel, in the haunted house for the rest of the night would be empty because I'd be gone. Yeah. <laughs> Well, there's a really boring section about <laughs> 20 minutes in. Yeah. No, that's terrifying. So I've got a couple posts from Reddit. Yes. And the first one goes like this. Quote, first, I am a skeptic. Love those posts. Normally here for debunking things. On my trip to OSR, Ohio State Reformatory, last week, I took a few photos down from the East Wing. I found something off in one of the photos. This area is chained off. Yes, someone could have went past the chain like a staff or a guest. Included are the photos, unaltered, and in the pictures, but zoomed in the image in question is highlighted in blue. A second picture was taken a few seconds later, and there was nothing there. Do you want to see the photo? Yeah, let's see it. So, Tyler, I want to post that photo up. Yes. Instagram and stuff. Yep, yep, yep. That's creepy and le- really creepy. But like I like I said off off here when I was talking to you, I would like to see. I wish there was a picture of that exact same spot like a minute or two later. Just mm. do that side by side. It's it's because you know if, if if it's missing, then it's a person, right? I mean the you, you saw the second photo. It's not there. Okay, my bad. I was I was confused. <laughs> Technical foul. Looked at it again. Definitely something. Definitely something not there in one photo. It's and the other creepy. Looks like a woman for sure. Zoom in. Or a burnt body. Oh, I zoomed in and it it looked just as, I I don't want to say glitchy, but it looked like it was from the original photo because I've I've superimposed and, you know, like added 
small things in the background to graphics that we've done for the podcast and stuff. Yeah. And sometimes when you zoom in on a photo, like the, the, the clarity of what you add in is different than the actual photo. Yeah. But, but it's the same. Yeah. Like yeah, it's, that's, that is really, really creepy. Yeah. It, I want to know what you guys think. I hope you guys comment on that. Yeah. Send that to me after the episode. Okay. So the next post is a comment on a Reddit thread. It goes like this. <laughs> I almost write it when I read it in all caps because it feels kind of crazy. Hi, guys. <laughs> the shower room. <laughs> the shower room is 100% haunted. We were there today. There was a loud banging noise before we walked in, so we figured someone was in there doing something. But when we got in there, the noise immediately stopped, and the room was totally empty. Then we walked out of the room, and it started up again. Could that be pipes? Definitely. Okay. I, just, I I mean, listen, I'm not to rain on their parade, and and who knows? It is coincidental that they walked in, no sound, or they hear it, and they walk in, no sound, and they leave, and there's a sound. Could be wind. But when I think about, like, sh- showers and stuff like that, pipes seem to be... Or a mouse or a bat or something bouncing the pipes. Yeah. Whatever. But so, y- it's yeah. a good post. It's something, though. It's something. Or a demon. <laughs> or it's a ghosty. All right, so this next post is three experiences from someone who actually worked in the Mansell Reformatory. Oh, like not like ghost hunting. But just no, like, like a yeah. tour guide. Yeah. And they're kind of long, so bear with me. First experience. My first day working there, I was following along behind a tour, working as a, quote, pusher, to keep people from wandering off and obeying the signs on the west cell block of the tour. It was around 3.30 or so, and I was standing on the south side, a few cells from the end of the block, while the guide was sharing something with the group when a few guests were asking me something. Don't remember the question, but the answer involved Jason and Grant from TAPS. Just as I said their names, I got hit from behind. My brother used to do this thing where he would walk up behind me and slam his hand down on my neck slash shoulder forcefully. His brother brothers actually worked here as well, so that's why he mentioned that. I had thought it was him who did this, and was pissed because it was way more forced than usual. But I turned around, and there was absolutely no one there. Brother was on another tour, and the guest I had been speaking with looked at me very confused. Ten minutes later, the tour was over, and my neck and shoulder were killing me. My right ear was ringing at this point, and the whole area felt like it was on fire. Next day, I woke up with a bruise on my neck and scratches on my ear. So that's his first encounter. On his first day, the next encounter... One day between tours, myself and a few other people decided to wander into the basement as we were still new and hadn't been there before. We were on the east side under the admin section and were just looking around. Very quickly we felt watched and it got much colder. The longer we stayed, the more uncomfortable it became. Only light works in the main room and there were five adjacent rooms and a hallway behind the stairs, so it was very dark. I sat on the steps for a moment and one of my friends took a picture of me and her grandson. No one else was on the steps. Immediately, we looked at it, and behind us you could see very clearly someone standing. They were transparent, but very detailed. A few moments later, we heard a shuffling sound. Assuming it was a raccoon, we approached where the noise came from, and nope the f*** out of there because we were met with a set of red eyes in the darkness. They weren't reflecting light like a deer or a cat's would. They were glowing, and they were their own light source. That's the end of the quote. Another day after the tours, my brother, two friends, were wandering the west cell block. We were on the north fourth range. As we were walking, we heard someone walking below us, and assumed it was K or M. Two other people who were working with us, and previously seen them walk past and head for the west tower. As we were walking toward the end of the cell block, after the footsteps, we heard what sounded like a cell door slam shut below us, and it shook the range. Odd, because it's a block with brick and mortar, but the tears are steel. Immediately following the bang of the steel, we heard running, a dragging sound, yelling from four different people, more loud, and a banging thud. Then everything went silent. We were all looking at each other like, what the f***? While we stood there for a few minutes listening, K and M walked by again on the ground floor coming back from the tower. It wasn't them that made the noise and they didn't hear anything. They were in a different part of the prison. End quote. And that was his last day. <laughs> Hopefully they pay well, because geez. Yeah. That is my last experience for the Mansfield Reformatory. So, Tyler, with that, let's move to the discussion. The 
this is the point where we like to stop the show, and I just want to thank a few special people that have joined the Patreon as of the recording of this episode, and that is Jamie and ELO. Thank you both so much for stopping in and, you know, supporting us. That means, it means literally so much. Thank you so much. We, we, I can't even express how much. But Tyler, why don't you tell Jamie what they've got in store for them? Jamie, first of all, what's up? And thank you. And just because there's only two, I'm going to shout you out personally. I'm going to tell Jamie and Yellow what type of content there is inside of our Patreon. We have multiple tiers, multiple options. We have ringtones that you can get. We got wallpapers, quizzes, game segments where you can play along with us and find out what stories are real, what stories are fake. Bizarre news where we keep you updated with weird, creepy, strange things that are actually happening day to day. We watch horror movies together. We have Google Hangouts where we just get together over Google Meet and literally just chat for an hour. We also have a shirt that you can only get by being a dedicated tier member. We do Director's Cut where we go back through previous episodes and discuss them, what was happening behind the scenes, what we think now, if we still find our believability scale values correct based on new information. And also, very, very excited, we have officially brought back the theatrical reading it is long it is heavily produced there is excellent voice acting excellent stories so if you like that if you like that style that is back on patreon super excited and reminder if you are a writer if you are a voice actor and or actress hit us up because you might have a really cool opportunity for you but there's a ton going on in patreon also and this doesn't really have to do with patreon but it's something that Charlie and I are kind of getting into. Sort of a sponsor, getting there. But we are working kind of a little bit with Magic Mind, which is like this. It's like this little drink. It's only a couple ounces. But basically, it's like a coffee substitute, so uh, to speak. Yeah, substitute kind of thing. Yeah, like basically, you get all the benefits of coffee without any of the jitters or the crashes. Like, it's supposed to be like a, a five to seven hour energy drink. We'll see what happens. But it's not like, you know, it's not five hour energy. It's, it's Magic Mind. So we'll be posting some videos about that. It's, you know, it's like the beginning of October. October. We're trying this out, see how it goes, but we'll keep you updated. Oh, um, how spooky. Charlie doesn't have coffee. <laughs> he is a, what do they call it, tear? Not a tear, a terror. A terror. He's a terror. <laughs> he's a terror in the morning. <laughs> well, I kept thinking bear, because I know that's your oh, spirit animal. Oh, yeah. He's a bear. He's a terror bear. Terror bear. That's beautiful. It's like a cryptid. It kind of. The terror bear. <laughs> what what state is the terror bear from? Oh, uh, California. California. Because the flag. You got Smokey the bear? And you got the terror bear. Oh, He's God. walking around. This is messed up cousin. <laughs> oh, God. But anyway, thank you to our new patrons. Uh, check us out with Magic Mind. But I'm excited to get to the discussion and talk about these creepy encounters and this haunted prison. Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> All right. So this is a big topic, Tyler. Yeah. The Ohio State Reformatory. Yep. It's a bang. It's, it's a one bang of our, for hot tuber. It's one of our own. Here in Ohio, we like to pimp things that are our own. It's true. We don't got that much to go for us. No, so. we're a little bit of a self low self-esteem state. Yeah. That's okay. I never really got the memes. What memes? The Ohio is everywhere memes. Oh, well, I feel like people leave Ohio, so we are everywhere. It's it's a weird thing. It's a weird thing, because there's like, I've seen two memes. Like, Ohio, you ever seen the astronaut where, like, it's zoomed out. It's all Ohio. It's all Always Ohio. Always has been. Yeah. yeah. But also I've seen a meme where there is no Ohio. It's just Michigan. Yeah. And, yeah. and you've seen the one where it's like, you know, either go to heaven or Ohio. <laughs> yeah. Multiple people have sent us that one. Yeah. They don't know how true it is. Yeah. I, we like to rep, you know, but it's like uh, people from Ohio everywhere because they because we leave. Yes. But anyway, it's it's really cool. It's definitely one of the biggest things in ohio even if it's not widely i don't know how widely known it is though i i don't know i think it's pretty well known at least in the paranormal community yeah it's it's a haunt it, when it comes to haunted prisons for sure yeah well Todd, and, it, like off air you were like i'm surprised we're doing this right now yeah i i thought we might do this one at the mansfield reformatory eventually but maybe we'll do something else there we might do another thing there maybe we'll just do more stories it'll be called more stories from the mansfield reformatory we have options or maybe we'll do a live ghost hunt there maybe maybe actually actually this is probably the more realistic thing is that you can pay to do like a go overnight stay yeah it's expensive but you can do an overnight stay there it's like a guy with a guide and you know ghost yeah. hunt maybe yeah. we'll do that and um that'd be cool we'll be like hey we'll pay but can we also stream they're like, we'll no, see. but we'll this still is, do it. Yeah, I know. 
We'll see. But, anyway. Yeah, I, you know, but it's so cool to do it here. I feel more comfortable, obviously, probably doing it here mm-hmm. than there. Me too. I'd be way less. I'm thinking, I'm thinking I'm way less scared here. But maybe that would make for more entertaining of a podcast if we did it somewhere that's actually haunted. No, you guys like to see it when I'm like about to pee my pants. Imagine you're li- editing this and you're listening back and you start getting all these EVPs and noises no, in the distance. No edits, the bro. I'd be like, this is done. <laughs> We're like laughing and stuff and in the background you just hear, no, my God, that's my biggest fear. Yeah. That's my biggest fear. Thankfully, my attic is relatively chill. Yeah. Well, there's an iron knife up here somewhere now. That's true. That's true. I love the encounters. It fits what they say. Getting touched, getting pushed, yeah. hearing noises. It's like, it perfectly fits hauntings. There's nothing over the top. I, I mean- will th- say this. You're right, though. There is nothing like- super sinister scary yeah like we're kind of hoping for like one we were doing a tour and then this little girl got lifted up and then thrown into a cell and the door slammed shut or like we saw a prisoner like try to stab us to the bars or something yeah like i mean probably the most dramatic thing was the guy getting smacked but that's yeah it's still part of getting touched yeah exactly so in terms of me having already kind of believed this place was haunted and these stories not being ridiculous. No, in they're any, really good. Yeah, they're like very traditional haunting, which makes it sound low key, but it's like all you have to do is mentally put yourself there. Yeah, and it's it is not terrifying. Imagine seeing those those red lights in the basement or the red eyes in the basement. No. no. Dude, like even getting that picture that person got from Reddit where it's the before and after. Yeah. Having that on my phone would feel dirty. It's on there right now. It's scary. Do not. Yeah, that's true. You have it. I I'll do. have it shortly, but yes. it's not not good, creepy, and it's like it's easy to believe that there's negative energy at this place. Absolutely, prison, especially after the suicides we talked about. Yeah, only the couple. I'm multiple, sure there's so multiple. many more abuse, violence, negative energy. People who knew their lives are pretty much over. Mm-hmm. Some probably for good reason. Some probably were not for good reason. Imagine how many masochists worked there, though. Oh. Also, like like the guard that may have beat that fourteen year old boy. That's like the McKamey Manor stuff. Yeah, it's like. To work there, like, come on. Yeah, like, you know what you're doing. Not to cut it short, but I, like, the only one where I was like, maybe this was the banging in the shower where it could have been. Yeah, I agree. Where it was probably a, you know, a pipe or something. But, uh, <laughs> you know, we were banging um, <laughs> in the shower. But I have to go believable. Like, I have to go believable. It, I just feel like I'm creeped out. The stories creep me out. It fits into my mental narrative of what I think a haunting is, and I already believe the place was haunted. I absolutely agree. You go believable? I go believable, for sure. But also, I'd love to hear, if you work there, yeah. please send us a message. As for like, as you, If you work there during the haunted house, I want to talk to Multiple you. things. If you have an experience there, literally send us your encounter. Even if it's, it could be minimal. It could be, I was just walking down stairs, and I felt someone poke me. That's fine. Send it to us. If you have a Mansfield Reformatory experience, please send it to us at believingthebazaar at gmail.com or just DM us, you know, on Instagram, whatever. But also, if you worked there as a as a haunted house person or a guide and you have experiences, hit us up. Um, we'd like to hear your story and we might even set up some type of like, you know, interview thing. Yeah, definitely. That'd be very cool. But yeah, I p- totally believable. Haunted, creepy. Both of the books as believable. Yes. So thank you for listening to this Ohio-centric episode of Believing the Bizarre. Mansfield Reformatory cannot believe it. It's such a... It's a finger! Dude, you're just we're doing an episode in there, and you listen back, and in the distance, you just hear, O-H! And you just gotta say I-O. You say I-O, yeah. Does everyone know that? Everyone you knows that, to. right? You have to. O-H. It's the Reformatory. <laughs> Mansfield. The Mansfield Reformatory. Yes. yes. Yes, yes, yes. Ohio State. I was on the plane today coming back. I was coming back from Atlanta today yeah. to, to Cleveland. And I was sitting in the middle seat, which sucks. It was, it was in one of those bigger planes. So there's three, three, three people. Yeah. Thankfully, none of us, like we, like everyone was chill. Everyone kind of mind their own business. It, you know, there was enough room and everything. <laughs> but like, so <laughs> the, the people in front of me, I could see, I could see the, the person in front of me on the left and I could see the person in front of me on the right. And they were both watching movies. So me in the back middle, I was just bouncing my eyes following both of the movies. And in, and I'm proud of myself. Instantly, I knew what both of the movies were. And they were both football related. The one, the guy on my left was watching Draft Day, which is about the Browns. Never seen that. Haven't either. I watched, I knew as soon as it was a Kevin Costner. 
Yeah. As soon as I saw him, I'm like, this is probably that. And it was. And then on the guy on the right was watching The Blind Side. I love The Blind Side. It's a good I movie. Enjoy. They should have held hands and watched it together. I know. Like, we're watching football. But yeah, I was just like, I was just bouncing between them. And I had music on. Like, I wasn't even listening. I had my own music. But I just, I, you can you can, you can can tell. If it's yeah. a good movie, you can tell what's going on. Offshoot of your offshoot. My cousin's husband was in the in the draft day as an extra. Really? Like yeah. in the stadium? No, in the draft room. Oh. He's wearing a suit. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's pretty cool. I think that was the year we drafted Johnny Manziel, though, which is kind of a bummer. Was it? I think so. Yikes, uh, yikes. Because there was like a moment of like, this is really exciting because it was like, wow, draft day came out and we got Johnny football. But then it was like, you know, six months later, you're like, oh, God, we got Johnny football. Oh, God. Anyway. Anyway, back to the (laughs) the podcast. What a fun episode. Yes. I mean, it's always time. They say there's always room for ice cream or jello. It's one of those, right? What is it? There's always room. There's always room for ice cream. And there's always time for a good haunting. Yeah. So this is the first episode in October. Awesome. Yep. You got to start off hard body uh, with the hauntings. And I'm I'm excited. You're going to see the tattoo by the time this comes out. Wow. You're going to see the tattoo. We got some new merch coming out soon. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of exciting stuff happening. We appreciate everybody who's been supporting us on Patreon. Yeah. We couldn't get the tattoo without you on Patreon. That is 100% true. And yeah. also stay tuned. We're going to have some information coming out shortly, but we are keeping up the tradition. We will be doing a live episode on Halloween or near Halloween. Is it the 30th? It, it's the 29th, probably. The 29th, probably. Okay. On the 29th, we're going to be doing a live episode. Spoiler, it's not going to be at the Mansfield Reform Tour. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be somewhere else in Ohio. It's going to be Charlie's yeah. house. Cause, or no, it's going to be producer Ben's house. Yeah. If you're part of our newsletter, listen, you can easily sign up for our newsletter it's on if you go to our website, believeinbizarre.com, or you go to Instagram and uh, click on the link in our bio. Subscribe to a newsletter. It's obviously it's a newsletter. It's completely free, but you get updates about things happening with the podcast, new merch dropped, things like that. But also Ben, our producer Ben, who helps us a lot on Patreon, behind the scenes stuff, website stuff. He likes to add scary stories about what's happening in real time at his yeah. house. And it's like, we'll be doing, and this is a little behind the scenes. We'll be doing Patreon stuff recording. And it's just like, I've known Ben for like three years now. You've known Ben for like two. Yeah. And we're just talking. He's like, hey guys, <laughs> did I tell you about the time this really terrifying thing happened? <laughs> know, right? And we're just like, how is this? We do a paranormal podcast. I know. He's just like, oh yeah, I forgot to tell you. I was possessed by yeah. Pazuzu. <laughs> But did, did wait? Did I tell you guys that? Yeah, oh, I don't think you did. I was <laughs> but, at my buddy's house. But anyway, he he's a really good writer. He has really really good stories. Every yeah. time he it tells us, if you listen to our most recent, do you believe the bizarre? You know exactly what kind of stuff we're talking about. Yeah, he's a good storyteller. It's super creepy, and it's so it's just another benefit of our newsletter. We might have some more stuff coming out about that. But for now, check that out. All good stuff. There's millions of ways to stay updated on the podcast, but and- nothing more important than listening every Tuesday. Absolutely. And if you like this episode, you like past episodes, you want to leave a review on Apple, that would be amazing. It would help us a lot. Five stars and review. And if you're on Spotify, just five stars would be great. Just five stars and move it along. But seriously, thank you everybody so much for listening. We're excited. This is our month. This is all of your month too. This is spooky time, spooky season. It is October Thank you, everybody, so much. As always, I'm Tyler. And I'm Charlie. And catch us next week on Believing the Bizarre. Podcast as bizarre as you are. I'm surprised you didn't save it in case we could actually go there one day. I thought I thought of that. Yeah. But I was like, there's also a lot of really cool places in Ohio, mm-hmm. and I want to go other places. Mm-hmm. So I'm kind of, I'm kind of banking on being able to go other places. Got you. No, I'm a little shocked. In a good way. No, I'm excited to talk about. It. I just figured we'd save that until we could actually go. I wanted to make it a banger, man. I was like, I want to, I want to bring this Halloween in with the, with the, no, with I the mean, boom. It's a big one, man. With it's the boom. A big one. All right. Yeah, I was yeah. filming that. I had the kid do that. Yeah. Did it work? Next take, nailed it. Dude, I like, I feel nervous to like tell clients that. Like when we were filming over, I, like I would do it. Like they were stumbling and I was yeah. like, mm-hmm. it's like when you hear someone like, Argh, and you're like, <clears throat> that, the, the look you just gave me though, is like you're, you're trying to f me. <laughs> is that the blooper? <laughs> <laughs> I guess so.